Greetings, everyone. This is Testimony Tuesday, where we share testimonies of things the Lord has done to encourage people. And hopefully this testimony will be some encourage, somewhat encouragement to you. I know I'm a testimony person. I love testimonies. That's why I keep on sharing them. If y'all want to share your testimonies, feel free to send them in. All right, let me get started because my wife is about to come home and I got I to gotta do it now while it's quiet. Anyway, I worked on this job. And there was, if y'all remember the other testimony I gave, I gave about the woman that got saved, um, you make, no, that wasn't, that wasn't the title, but she said to me, you make me a believer. And, um, she worked right next to me. She was from Brooklyn. She was mean. Well, this is somewhat like that because this woman was from Brooklyn and she was mean. And, um, and this was the same job. This was the same job. A lot of people got saved on this job. So when you hear me talking about people getting saved at work and stuff like that, it's all on this one job. Anyway, there was this woman there that worked on a different shift than mine. And this woman was from New York. She was mean. I remember speaking to her one time. I was like, hey, how you doing? She's like, she had gold teeth in her mouth. And uh, I would just speak to her when I see her. Like, I spoke to everybody like, hey, how you doing? And she was just... Now, if I was to say, now let me tell you, when I, came, when I came down here, I was just like the other Brooklyn people. I was mean too. Because I remember at another job, not to get off topic, but I remember at another job, there would be like guys trying to be down with me. Because let me tell you, I went to work dressed. I went to work with two big gold chains on, diamond bracelet rings. I went being flashy. I looked like I, I, looked like I had money. I looked like I shouldn't even been on that job, to be honest with you. And like, I was all about the women. Guys were trying to be down with me. I wasn't trying to hit. I remember one time a guy was working next to me, talking. And I'm just steady ignoring him, ignoring him. Till one day I found out he was cool. But anyway, let me go back to this other job. Sorry, y'all. But anyway, she was mean. People on the job were scared of her. I worked night shift. She worked day shift. So there was a guy on my shift that ran her machine at night. And then she would come back and run it in the day. You know, it was only, it wasn't no... First shift, second shift, third shift. It was A, B, C, D. So people were scared. They were talking about, I overheard them talking about him one day. They were like, don't leave her machine messed up. That woman will curse you out. This is guys and girls talking about, I'm like, wow. I will speak to her. And she's going to see, she's going to most likely see this testimony anyway, because we still cool, me and, excuse me, me and her family still cool. Uh, um, but as time went on, I used to go to lunch with this older woman, this woman that was um, old enough to be my mother because she was the only saint on a job. And we used to just fellowship and have have um, a good time on break. She had four daughters. She would be like, she would say to me all the time. She's like, Tron, I wish my daughters were saved so one of them could marry you. And that was so sweet. That was so that's so sweet. Me and her went to lunch every day. That was sweet for her to say that. But I found my good thing, though. But anyway, as time went on, somehow, I don't remember how this started, but somehow, this, the mean woman from New York, she started going to break with us. But now, at this time, she coming out of the meanness. She's still mean, but she coming out a little bit. And I didn't know the Lord was working on her, but she coming out of the meanness a little bit. And... And saying some of y'all gonna hate me for this testimony, but then you're gonna wind up loving me in the end. Now, she used to bring to she used to bring me um trail mix. I've never had trail mix till I met her. The mean woman. She used to bring me bags that we became cool. She still wasn't saved. She would bring me trail mix to work. Either she would buy it for me or she'd make it at home, you know. So I was loving that, you know, the raisins, the M&Ms, the peanuts, different stuff. Never had trail mix in my life. Probably, I don't even think I ever heard of trail mix before her. So she would bring me that. And every month I was getting bags of trail mix from her. Trail mix. I'm just enjoying the trail mix and loving the trail mix. And, and um, So as it happened one day, I gave her $5. She told me. If she bought, if she, she might buy the trail mix. And, but if she make it, 
she'll give me my five dollars back. Yeah, cause I lived in the country. I lived in the country not far from the job was in the country. I lived in the country not far from the job. So I didn't have to go to town. She was going through town, passing grocery stores or whatever. So she said, if if I buy it, if I um, make the bag, I just, I give you five dollars back. So what happened, team? And I'm ashamed of this to this day, but I have to tell y'all this testimony. Now, she wound up making the bag, team. But she didn't give me my five dollars back. Now, at this time, Tim, I make about $900 a week on this job. Make about $900 a week. She came in. She gave me the bag. And the first thing I noticed is that it's a bag that she made. This was not a trail mix bag. It's a bag she made. So I'm looking for my $5, but I don't say nothing. She don't give me my $5 back. And then she also acknowledged that she made the bag. She don't give me my $5 back. So now, Tim, I'm mad. Now, this is petty. This is, I ain't lying to you, this is petty, team. I'm mad about my $5. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how mad I was at her about my $5. Team, I stopped speaking to her over $5. Here I am making $900 and change a week, and I stopped speaking to her over $5. She would speak to me. Now, it's like we roles reverse. She would speak to me. And I just look at her and I keep walking. You know, when I think about it now, I just that's just horrible for a child of God. Like, she would speak to me and I just look at her and I keep walking. I, I was mad about my $5. And I probably held on to that grudge team. It's embarrassing to say, but I probably didn't speak to her for about two months. Over $5. And like I said, she might be watching this so she could verify that all this is true. But also, if you're watching this, um, can I have my five dollars back? This was years ago, but I want my five dollars back. But anyway, I stopped speaking to her. And one day I just started back speaking to her. But it was all it was all God because I invited her to church. For something we was having. And she told me she would come. And she didn't come. So I'm the type of person like. If I invite you to church. And you don't come. The next time I see you. I don't say nothing about it. Because most sinners. Are looking for you to say something about it. They're looking for you to hound them. Bother them. So sometimes people will avoid you. Because they didn't come to church. And I never wanted nobody to be like that with me. So when I see you again. Anybody. When I see you again. I don't say nothing about church. I don't say like, why you ain't come? Why you ain't do this? Get out of here. Because people need to know that you care more about their soul than them showing up to the building. And I care more about the person. Just like if me and you were going to church together and I don't see you, let's say, two Sundays in a row. And then you finally come back to church. Now, this has happened to me. And you finally come back to church and be like, missed you Sunday. Get out of here. I don't like churchy stuff. And I thank God they gave me a wife that don't like churchy stuff. I don't like churchy stuff. Church, miss you Sunday is not waiting until I come back. That's not miss you Sunday. The devil could have killed me in that time. I'm going to show you what miss you Sunday is. This is miss you Sunday. Hey. Hello. Hey, Sean. How you doing? Yeah, I'm just checking on you, bro. That's miss you Sunday or going to somebody's house. That's miss you Sunday. Not wait until you see me two weeks later. Missed you Sunday. And people need to know it's not about you coming to church. I care more about your soul. But anyway, next time I saw her, I didn't even mention none of that. I ain't mentioned none of that. I just talked to her regularly. A couple of months went by. Same thing again. We was having something at church. I invited her to church. And um, she said she would come. She didn't show up. I see her again at work. I don't mention it. At this time, now we're on the same shift. When she used to be mean and I speak, we wasn't on the same shift at that time. But at the time of the trail mix, we was on the same shift. And anyway, um, so the second time she did it again, she didn't come. And I didn't, I didn't say nothing about it. I just 
treated her the same, conversated with her, blah, 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 blah. And the third time, the third time um, I invited her to church, we was having something. This was months later, months later again. I don't know, this whole process might have been a year. I don't know. This whole process might have been a year. The third time I invited her to her church, she said she would come. This time she came. She finally came to church. She finally kept her word. Now let me tell you this. What I didn't know at the time now, this job is in the country. I live down in the country. Now, I did not know at the time, now I started inviting her to church, that she had to go past my church. My church was 20 minutes away from my job. I live down in the country, my church uptown. She had to go past my church every day. I did not know this. And um, she started, she started, she came to church that night. Then she started coming without me asking her. She started coming on her own without me asking her. And then y'all, she gave her life to the Lord. Now she didn't give her life to the Lord right away. But after coming and coming and coming, she gave her life to the Lord. But imagine if, if I would have kept holding that grudge for that five dollars. And I say this to say, some of you might be holding grudges now with somebody that the Lord wants you to win. So that's why I tell the story, because I held a grudge over something so petty as five dollars. And I stopped speaking to her. And the Lord's hand was on her. And I did not even know it. I didn't discern it. I didn't know it. But I could have messed up that whole thing. Now, surely the Lord could have used somebody else too, but I'm just saying, he wanted to use me. And she came to church, started coming to church, started coming to church, and she, she got saved. Then, now watch this. Then, at the time, she was shacking. She put the boyfriend in the um in another room. He might see this too, because I'm friends with both of them. She put the boyfriend in another room and then they got married. They got married shortly after. Now watch this. She put him in the other room. Then he started coming to church. I think he started coming to church to see why she was coming to church. And he wound up getting saved. Then they get married shortly after. Wow. Then the son start coming to church. I mean, and just it's just awesome to see what the Lord did. It was like a domino effect. She came. The husband came. Then the son came. And I know the, the man is the head of the house. The man is the head of the wife, even as Christ is also the head of the church. But if you look in a lot of relationships, if the woman step out and do it, the whole family will follow. And, so, and I've seen that in, a, in some cases. I can't go into detail and tell you what I'm talking about, but... Because I never know who might be watching this. But sometimes if the woman step out and do stuff, the whole family will come. And I, when I say come, I don't mean to church. The whole family will line up. But anyway, yes. And then she got saved. He got saved. The son got saved. But. This would never have happened, at that time anyway, if I would have held on to that garage. So just release people. Release people. It's nothing but $5. I had a bunch of $5 bills within other bills, within other bills, within other bills. I wasn't even at home. Y'all, I didn't go nowhere. I ain't do nothing. I wasn't even spending my money. Money was rack racking up in the bank. This is how I first started getting photography equipment. Money was just racking up in the bank. I would go out once in a while. I wasn't dating nobody. I go out once in a while to a restaurant, go to Ruby Tuesday by myself, walk around the mall. I wouldn't really do nothing. But anyway, y'all, but it was awesome what the Lord has done. Then she became one of my leaders. <laughs> she became one of my leaders at church. I brought her to church. She became one of my leaders. Would never, never bother me because I know who I am. 
I know who I am. But she became one of the ministers there. Her husband became one of the head deacons there. They still there now. They still, they, she's still in her position right now. He's still in his position. I tell you, it's just awesome to see what the Lord has done. But at first he thought, her husband thought when they were just dating, when they were shacking, let me call it what it is, when they were shacking, he thought, he thought I was calling there to like holler at her because this is what I would do. I would call her house every now and then. I don't know if it was to encourage her. I don't even remember why I would call her house, but I would call her house every now and then at that time. But I was the type of person that the phone rang three times, I hang up. So I guess he would get to it and then it just hung up. And then he thought, hey, there's something fishy going on. So he might have came to church to check me. I don't know. But anyway, I was the type to do if I heard three. But I didn't know that if I heard it three times, the other person only heard it twice. So that I was doing that with everybody. So it, it did look fishy to him. But anyway, that's the testimony. Let things go. Let them grudges go. We got to win souls to the kingdom. I want to be a soul winner. And I'm sure y'all want to be a soul winner. And one other thing about souls. When you win souls to the kingdom, I know we'd be happy be like, man, be telling people just want a soul. But keep up with the soul that you want. Don't just win soul and win a soul and then go on about your business. Because now that person got questions. And plus, the people that they were hanging around are going to still come around. They got questions. They need to get in church. They need you praying with them. They need, they need you to pump them up and get them excited about God. And never sit back and be like, well, they don't call me. They must don't want it. No, you call them because this is a baby. Now you supposed to nurture the baby, feed the baby, give the baby some milk. Tell the baby what to read. Come on, pray with the baby. But anyway, y'all, I'm out of here. I just wanted to share that testimony with y'all. God did an awesome thing. And I got more testimonies coming. I got more testimonies coming. If y'all would like to share some testimonies with us, feel free. You're not obligated because I'll keep sharing. It's no problem. Anyway. Ooh.